I want to say I can, and I've done this multiple times. Use a, a rubber band and show no a way. housefly. No, no way. way. Help everybody! How do I tell my parents that I want to do my degree plus masters plus PhD in mosquitoes? This is your daily catch up. This episode is brought to you by the National Environment Agency of Singapore. So Singapore has been battling a severe dengue outbreak since the start of 2022. There have been actually more than 26,000 cases reported already, oh. which is actually five times more than the previous year's total number of Damn. cases. Oh, wow. Yeah. So dengue can lead to serious health consequences, as we all know. But the good news is there are ways to prevent mosquito breeding as well as protect yourself from dengue. So on to the episode. Yes, yeah, so today we have Associate Professor Christina here Ooh. to give us more insight into this. She actually... <laughs> hey, carry on the episode, please. <laughs> Can I have stagnant water so he... <laughs> she actually has a really interesting job. So she's an entomologist. Do you know what that is? Yes, of um, course. We saw the paper. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the study of insects. So that's what she does like professionally, which is very interesting to me at least. Which so is like a childhood dream. Yeah. Can you share a bit about like what you actually do minus. also why yeah why would i do something like that hi hi denise hi everyone so yes you're right i study insects um specifically mosquitoes and even more specifically the Aedes mosquito and the reason why i got into this was i was always fascinated by insects and i thought that why not put that fascination to good use and study something that would help people would benefit mankind you know to get rid of mosquitoes and to combat infectious diseases so it sounds kind of really cliche but i I wanted to do, to do some good for the world. Right, That's right, why right. I studied mosquitoes. But what, how do you develop that fascination? Right? Like if I see mosquito there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was studying medical parasitology at the time, which is the study of parasitic parasites, diseases. Yeah. Parasites, exactly. Gotcha. Um, so I was actually more interested in the disease <laughs> slow down, side. Slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, parasitomor. <laughs> <laughs> Parasitology. Um, oh, okay. Parasitology. Yeah. Study of okay. Paris. Okay. <laughs> <I> actually, <laughs> okay, okay sorry, sorry. So then I actually got inspired by this professor who taught me, and he was a medical entomologist, which meant that he focused on the mosquito rather than the parasitic disease. The carrier. Uh, exactly. Precisely. Mm. The carrier. What are like examples of like the parasitic? Uh, oh, malaria. Malaria oh, is okay, like okay. one of the biggest. Malaria is a born. parasite. It's a parasite. Malaria. Isn't every bacteria a parasite? No, 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 no. <laughs> right, uh, they just leave off you also. Right? There are parasites, there are bacteria, there are viruses, and um, you know those are different types of pathogens. There are fungi as well. Okay. I feel like I'm in sec two, but then I go for the sec four, sec, sec four science class. I don't know what, <laughs> what is going on. <laughs> the whole life. <laughs> So, so yeah, I was inspired by this professor. So his name was Chris Curtis, and he was amazing because he's the one that invented um, insecticide-treated nets. No! Yes. He invented it. He, he did. Wow. He, did. Okay. he pioneered it, and then he, um, he, he campaigned for these nets to be given out um, yeah. to people for free, mm. and it really helped. Sorry, hold reduce. up. He invented mosquito nets. Um, no, he with, with insecticide mm. With insecticide yeah. oh. Got you, got you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, The other thing he did Which is really interesting Is he um, He invented the use Of polystyrene beads And he put them In Zanzibar In this field trial He put them on the top Of cesspits Or pit latrines yeah. Where people used to go To the toilet All uh -huh. these water bodies Which were breeding Cesspit, Culex uh. mosquitoes Also known as shit hole yeah. <laughs> yeah The bog <laughs> the toilet. Yeah. Um, so these polystyrene bees expanded and they prevented the mosquito larvae from breathing and they all suffocated underneath and mm. he reduced the transmission. The way she says they all suffocated in a really it's nice tone. Yeah. 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 Best way to kill <laughs> mosquitoes. Family, right? <laughs> 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 I suffocated there. <laughs> so yeah, it reduced the um, number of population of Culex mosquitoes in that town by 98%. Wow. It was amazing. Yeah. Wait, but the most, so you said you already had a fascination with insects, right? Yeah. It started with mosquitoes. Like you say did. what, like cockroaches, all that? Like oh, no, 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 they're disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they all? <laughs> I'm actually scared of cockroaches. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make your work very difficult? No, because thankfully they don't really coexist. I, I mean, apart right. from yeah. in our homes, but they're, so the breeding places are not quite the same. Their behavior is not the same. if you okay, study okay. insects, like you're going to pay money to study, so it's not cheap, right? And you, you, you have, might have to go overseas to study insects, yes. right? There's not many jobs that would pay well outside of mosquitoes, hey? Like, if you study beetles, for example, like specialize in beetles, yes. just can't be rich, eh? 
You could join a pharmaceutical <laughs> company because like there might be needs for like antidotes or like sure. certain sure. things. Like that. <laughs> and sure. And they pay or well. Or like space exploration. See, your cockroach can die. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I think Perhaps. most people who go into studying insects and stuff, they do it to better mankind mm. rather than mm. to make money. They yeah, could go to yeah. WHO. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah WHO is. WHO. No, no, but I mean, you need to feed your family, or. Right? But okay, okay. <laughs> no, it's interesting to me because like if you have a strong love for animals like me, then like zoology might be something mm. that you consider growing up. Then you want to go out and take care of animals and all that stuff. Mm. Um, but then when you study insects, you're probably gonna get rid of them. Like for mosquitoes at least. Right? No, but when when you study mosquitoes, do you love mosquitoes or you just love the, the study of mosquitoes? Yeah. I love the study of mosquitoes for a bigger purpose, which is public health, Got improving you. public health okay. in countries. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Like yeah. Singapore. I have a pet mosquito. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 Clap for a mosquito. Do I kill a mosquito? <laughs> like well, that. You know, honestly, that's what I do at home. If I see, if I know that there are mosquitoes at home, I know somebody's getting bitten. I will hunt down that mosquito and I will just clap and kill her as well. You hunt down a mosquito. Yes. Yes. Oh, I, I can she, lose her track. Her job of is to study oh the. Yeah. She need to yeah. the flight path. Oh, I can. I want. I want to say I can, and I've done this multiple times. Use a, a rubber band. No way. House fly. No, no way. way. Yeah, Most people cannot. Yeah. House fly. Next time you video. Then yeah, it must land lah. Not mid. Not mid flight lah. It must land. And and just. I've done it multiple times. Yeah. yeah. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> no <one> sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> not always first try. I've done it multiple times. Is it true that if a mosquito lands on like say my arm right, I flex it, then it cannot. It gets stuck. It will burst. And then I can. Oh, no, I heard it explodes. Oh. No, it's true because when you're flexing your muscle, the mosquito is sort of stuck while she's trying to blood feed off you. So, um, so, so she gets stuck for a while and then it's easier to smack her. In fact, when she's biting you, it's easier to smack her than yeah. when she's like <laughs> flying around. Because once she's busy feeding on you, um, she's a bit preoccupied and then you can kill her. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Oh. When she, as in like males don't drink blood. Yes, so male mosquitoes don't bite. Um, female mosquitoes are the ones who uh, bite because they need the protein in your blood to produce their eggs. So males right. don't bite at all. Um, males are actually good mosquitoes. They feed on flower nectar and plant What can we draw from that about humans? Mosquito feeds on nectar. Yes. Mosquitoes are important pollinators. So we can't get rid Wait, of them. Wait, tell me mosquito useless. Yeah, I, 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 read, <laughs> I read somewhere, right, that like you know how like the earth has this ecological balance right and if you remove all one species will affect others yeah. but the mosquitoes are one are that one species that if we eradicate it doesn't really affect yes and no i in fact actually mosquitoes are a very important um source of biomass in the food web um they are important oh. prey for quite a lot of wildlife out there so fish eat mosquito larvae and there are frogs. other frogs <laughs> eat the adults frogs lizards um dragonflies um mm. bats and birds they right. feed on mosquitoes so Mosquitoes are important in that sense. Um, they are very useful. And then, as I mentioned just now, as pollinators, um, in fact, there are some wild orchids that depend exclusively on mosquitoes to pollinate them. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. And orchids are so important in Singapore because like, every time yes. there's a guest of honor that comes, you always give them a new yeah, strain exactly. of orchids. If not, then how will we welcome our guest of honor in exactly. Singapore? Exactly. Yes. Thanks, mosquitoes. Yeah. Shams and another one of our producers, and I actually did a pre interview with Prof, right? And so Shams asked her this question, right? When she told me, I laugh at her. So I say, why would you ask such a question? So yeah. she said, right, her mom has been complaining that like they stay on 12th floor. Ma. Last time she said her house, no mosquitoes one. Then she said nowadays, right, it's because mosquitoes have evolved, right? So that they can fly higher. Then now in her house got mosquito. So she asked her, is it true? Yeah. Then I like, why would you ask such a stupid question? <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, Denise. So it it wasn't stupid at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Was 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 <laughs> it, it was an amazing question. Um, nobody in the world had looked at how high mosquitoes flew. Or I wanted Until to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Until Shum's <laughs> mum. <Yes. laughs> um, and in Singapore, it's really important because over 95% of us actually live in these high-rise buildings. Yep. So it's important for us to know if we live on the top floor, are we at the same risk of being bitten by mosquitoes and getting dengue as somebody, say, living on the bottom floor? So what I did was to release mosquitoes, um, but first I glued their mouth parts shut so that they couldn't <laughs> bite anyone. Then I released them in this building. Wait, you glued their mouth? Yeah. 
So I initially wait, wait, I thought no. it was a figure of speech. She no. said very creepy things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. yeah. So yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, let them suffer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Suffocate them. Sorry. They're just mosquitoes. Yeah, no, no, sure, sure. Oh. We are, we are on board killing them. But no, but yeah. how did you glue? Yeah. <laughs> you glue uh, them. The slogan: yeah. Not all life is precious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one by one. Yes, one by one. So, wow. So oh. fun also. Oh my god. Okay, I understand now. I see I see the appeal. Now yeah. you want to study mosquitoes as yeah. well. It's so amazing. Um, but the mosquitoes are like... Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because now, of course, we're releasing male mosquitoes. So it's okay. They don't bite. They don't, they don't but bite. Those, yeah. But in those days, I was releasing female mosquitoes. Okay. Because I was tracking their eggs. So it had to be female mosquitoes. Mm. So I couldn't release mosquitoes that would bite anybody. So what I did was it's to... It's an ethical thing to do. It is, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You have to take these things into account. Don't stop slowing down, 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 down. Uh, So I, I blood fed them and uh, with this heavy metal marker and I anesthetized them. I laid them all out in a row and then I put a tiny blob of glue on their proboscis. And then they woke up like within, you know, a few five minutes or something. Then I put them back into the cage and then the next day I released them in the field. Um, so then they flew all over this building as well as um, outside in the open terrain and then they laid their eggs in these traps that I had set up and then I went back to collect the eggs and then I analysed each egg to see whether they were containing my heavy metal marker and if they did then I knew that they were from my mosquitoes that I had released. Oh. To track how they I moved. was wondering how yeah. she like she released yeah, it yeah. Right? Yeah. how she yeah. gonna like, track yeah, yeah. order. Sorry? How they come back? Yeah. How did they come back? <laughs> <laughs> they fly once a girl. So whenever they, the mosquito fly past, they can hear them. Mm. It's because their mouth are glued shut. <laughs> well, they couldn't feed, they so they, they died for, for a few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But it's so, like years for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the amazing thing is that for this study in this high rise apartment building, whenever I would tell this story in lectures, the students would always ask me, um, did the mosquito take the lift to go upstairs? You know, did she yeah. really go up to I the I would think some of them did lah. No, no they, well, firstly, the lift button is too big for them to press. But secondly, this building <laughs> 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 That's why they're the tiny. No, is it like if I go inside the lift and the company. mosquito follow me? Yes, definitely. They could have done that. But this building was empty. It was vacant. Nobody was living there oh, because yeah, apparently yeah. it was haunted. So nobody wanted to live there. The oh. mosquitoes don't know that. The mosquitoes didn't know that. So they flew in and out through every window and laid their eggs. So it was real movement, not yeah. lift movement. Okay. Yeah. So I found that in a high-rise building, the mosquitoes could easily move up and down um, within one day and lay her eggs at the top and at the bottom. So it means that um, all of us are at risk of dengue yeah. from mosquitoes. It doesn't no matter, matter whether, how high you manage to conclude how high they can fly? Oh, well, right up to the 21st story and only oh. because uh, my study was limited by the height of, of the, the building. building. Yeah. So it could yeah. potentially be oh. higher as yeah. well. But I actually released her in open field as well um, to see how far she would fly. And at the time, you know, people in the world had said that mosquitoes don't fly very far. The Aedes aegypti mosquito doesn't fly more than 50 meters in her lifetime. But my study showed that um, within one day, she could easily fly in an area of at least 800 meters in diameter. And oh, again, wow. it was also limited by the size of my study. So your study actually dispelled quite a lot of the conventional yes, thing in absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Great, and nice. also my study showed that Singapore mosquitoes are super, stronger. super stronger. Ooh. It's Singapore. I learned that from a Malaysian uncle. Yeah. Standard Singapore. Oh. He, because uh, like, I was somewhere in JB, like when I was younger, and then like there were flies landing, and the uncle just killed it very easily. Or, or rather, I was complaining to the uncle or something like that. And then he said, uh, just hit lah, very easy to die one. He said, our mosquitoes here not like Singapore. Singapore, they drink your water, your water, a lot of chemicals, so they're very strong. <laughs> It's the, floor right. it's the floor shit right. Like that. So there is some truth to it. Oh, there is, there is Why truth. is that so? Well, because in Singapore, um, NEA's dengue control program, which has been in place since like the, the 70s, is really comprehensive and really robust. And because of our good removal of breeding sites and public education and everything, we've actually removed a lot of the mosquito breeding sites. So the mosquitoes had to fly further and you know oh, put in a lot right. more effort to be able to breed so They've they have adapted out. yeah it's sort of evolution survival of the fittest okay wow everything yeah. in singapore stress even blind mosquitoes also. and then they go tuition from a young we should to close the loop the the singapore water the water in singapore has no chemicals so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> all we have right <laughs> we're putting our misconceptions so, so this is this is probably not uh, insect question as much as a question about flight, right? But if you can answer this, right? Like, if an insect has a maximum height it can fly, and let's say I bring it to the to the hundred story in a box, right? So it will get there, then it can fly around my apartment on the hundred story, right? If I take it out and I put it above my window ledge, will it nose dive? You mean 
dive out of your window. Like, will it just fall? Will it fall? Because it's unable it to fly a hundred. Oh stars. no, no, I don't think so. I think I think mosquitoes can. They can carry. They they can be carried by the wind. And in fact, actually, when when um, any um, dengue inspection officers have gone to look at the high floors of um, HDB blocks, for instance, they found mosquito breeding right at the top and on the roof. Yeah, the, the gutter. The roofing, yeah, the roof gutters of landed property and on the you know HDB blocks, the top floors and everything. So naturally, they do go that high. Okay. Right, right. So if let's say the both of us are sitting at, at a bench at East Coast Park, right, with sweaty, hairy legs, right? <laughs> Mm, can attest. Yeah, really <laughs> quite hairy. What are the factors that determine whether we are more attractive to a female mosquito? So that's a really age-old question. Everybody has been asking that question. We do know that there are certain um, things that make somebody more attractive than another, even if we're sitting in the same place and we have the same amount of exposed skin. So one of the things would be your uh, body temperature. Oh. So mosquitoes are attracted to heat. Female mosquitoes are attracted to heat. So some of us have higher body temperatures right. than others. So then you'd be more attractive. Also, the amount of um, carbon dioxide we exhale. Carbon so, dioxide? Yeah, mosquitoes are attracted to, they find us through the carbon dioxide we exhale. So yeah. Then why do yeah. most of the bites happen at our ankles, for example, as opposed to near our faces? Yeah. Because you will sweat, like if it's at your, you were like that, ma. True, but the carbon dioxide ain't there. Eh? Yeah. Oh, this carbon dioxide is heavier, so it sinks. <gasps> no, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. Legit, I'm legit. not an aromologist, yeah. So like for the longest time, I had I've had relatives that tell like told me that if you eat spicy food, right, mosquitoes won't bite you. Is it true? Won't bite you. Mm. It is true that mosquitoes are repelled by certain um, substances. So I have heard that mosquitoes are repelled by like things like um, spice and garlic. Um, I think further studies need to be done by it, but it's possible true. But on the other hand, if you eat spicy food, your body temperature rises because you know high metabolism, right. so you're going to be more attractive. Oh, you got body odors or this? Yeah, 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 yeah. That could be. It. Yeah. So actually, so body odor <laughs> is another thing that attracts mosquitoes, and we have different oh, compositions on our skin. So things like lactic acid, ammonia, octanol. These are things that attract mosquitoes and we have sort of different amounts of this and um, bacteria on our skin as well. So there are studies to show that um, people who have more bacteria on their skin are more attractive to mosquitoes than those who have less. But why they bite your ankles, John? That was a, that's a really good question because um, smelly feet. That's, oh, that's simple. No wonder your ankles always get, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In general, all, our, all of us have got smellier feet than other parts of our body because there's a lot of bacteria. Mm, so mosquitoes, yes, mm, are not, it. it's, yeah. it's not you, it's all of us. One man's yeah. trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> For mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Treasure. Yes. So I'm guessing like This increase in numbers Is due to like Covid happening And then circuit breaker So everyone was staying at home And so then Everyone started buying plants No is it? Possibly did, Or like people did. were all staying in Singapore one Singapore had spot, a whole plant phase During Covid That's true actually yeah. Well we did We did say that At the time when um, We People were staying home There was um, There were more dengue cases And it, it's possible That because we're at home And the Aedes mosquitoes Live in our home With us um, They have more of us To feed on hmm. So there was some kind Of correlation there Yes okay. So at that point We put out a lot of Public communications And we did a lot of Community engagement To tell people That um, you know The risk is high Right now Because we're all at home And Aedes mosquitoes hmm. Are day biters So we're at home And they're biting us During the daytime So we really have to be Even more vigilant Yeah Are, are there certain times Because I remember When yes. I was young My mum always said don't go around 6pm or like some like something along those lines I can't remember which mosquito or what insect it was it's your called. curfew la. <laughs> maybe your mum was clever because at 6pm at dawn and dusk all mosquito species come out oh. so the ones that bite you at night as well as the ones that bite you in day they're sort of more abundant so oh. you have more it's mosquitoes it's the in between it's the crisscross yeah. okay. golden hour twilight the, yeah. uh, golden hour <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. how many mosquito species are there well in the world there are over 3,500 mosquito species <laughs> And in Singapore? In Singapore, we have at, um, at the Environment Health Institute of the National Environment Agency, we actually did a study where we went into the field and we collected all the mosquito species we could find. Oh, a job. Found so fun, right? Is it just like that and then like that? I'm so fascinated. We used the yeah. net to catch the adults and we used um, we yeah. made these soup scoops to catch the larvae. Oh. Oh. It was amazing. It was really fun, really fun days. Um, we found over 180 <laughs> species of mosquitoes in Singapore alone. Right. Wow. Anyway, so how do you explain explain this to your parents that I'm going to study mosquito <laughs> like this is my life's work <laughs> oh, wow what's the sound of that is it the sound of people pushing the like share and subscribe and support our channel don't forget to also turn on the notification bell and back to the episode
<laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, actually, my parents really understood, and they were very supportive, and they thought going around getting rid of mosquitoes and getting rid of in, diseases in the world is a really good thing to do. So they were very supportive, and um, my my family has a medical background, so nobody was surprised oh, okay. and nobody was squeamish, and um, it was a, a really good thing. And also because you know we're always talking about how to get rid of mosquitoes at home. My explanation to them is it's really important to teach the public what's the best way of getting rid of mosquitoes, and um, that's why actually that's why I wanted to work for NEA. I thought that if we could go out there and help the public understand the dangers of mosquitoes and how we could get rid of them, then we could all collectively get rid of dengue in Singapore and and in the region as well. Is dengue fever like from mosquitoes? You mean did it originate in the mosquito? Yeah. Oh. Because so, they just pass it around, right? Yeah, that's a really good question, John. Actually, they do basically pass it around. That that's why they're vectors. So um, usually the mosquito when she's born, she's kind of clean or naive and she doesn't really carry Ew, dengue such a Only, nice yeah naive and then they pick up dengue by biting somebody who has dengue so for instance yep. if there's a mosquito flying around and you had dengue and you may or may not be showing symptoms the mosquito bites you then she'll bite me because she takes many blood meals in one um, cycle and then she'll pass dengue to me and she could bite all of us at the same time bite you Denise bite you John yeah. and then we all come down with dengue at the same time that's why you often see whole families coming down with dengue yeah. but how did yeah. then get dengue in the first place oh, they bit somebody who so a lot of us somewhere else. Uh, so is dengue really else the most people's dengue. fault though no they're just really poor middlemen yeah, yeah they just yeah. try to eat eh. so if we eradicate it, yeah. dengue within like a population yes so then there's just no way they can spread that, like, mosquitoes are no longer dangerous like in that sense or hey, these mosquitoes won't be dangerous yes you're absolutely right john but the problem is you can't eradicate dengue in a population because it's us who are yeah. doing so unless you kill all of us yeah 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 <laughs> all, all yeah. Us easier to kill the mosquito than kill humans yeah bigger net for that yeah you're talking about blood meals right yes sounds delicious how <laughs> how many times does a mosquito need to suck Feed. blood how many meals can they have? Like a day. Ah, uh, in a day. Oh, what? Uh, oh, no. Um, it's not in a day. In her lifetime, she... Sorry, the s- lifetime is two weeks? Uh, it's roughly two weeks in the wild. Oh. But in, in the wild, because they're natural predators. But yeah. in the laboratory, we've managed to keep them alive for many months. <gasps> um, so in my house, they survive for many months? No, probably not. Unless you've got natural predators in your house. Probably roughly one. about two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> right. um, so in her lifetime of about two weeks, usually she'll blood feed three times. Oh, but the amazing oh. thing is that each time she blood feeds, so she'll blood feed, then she'll rest, her eggs will mature. About three days later, she'll lay her eggs. And then after that, um, she'll be ready for another blood meal. Mm. But each oh. time a female, she sucks blood and she lays eggs, she'll lay about around 100 eggs each time. So in a mosquito's lifetime, she can lay about 300 eggs. She has about 300 children. Mm. So that's why we say it's so important to get rid of the source. You yep. know, source reduction is a more right. important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get rid of those eggs and larvae, you're really getting rid of a lot more mosquitoes than if you were to just chase that one adult and clap mm. and kill. I do realise that their lifespan was two weeks, so their turnover rate is like... Quite high. Really. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. They are like the epitome of life, actually. Yeah. What do you mean? They, they survive despite all odds. They are so efficient in their yeah. mating. They don't spend more than necessary time having sex. Then yeah. they just go and yeah, and lay three hundred. And yeah. Then, and then die. And then they they just bite you one time. Then that's it. They are good. Eh? They are good for one hundred babies. Yeah. yeah. And in their lifetime, they only bite three times, probably. And in these three times, they make dengue such a thing in Singapore. Yeah. Amazing, right? Like, how much of a cost for concern is it? If I get, right, what, what's like the fatality rate or like the... Mm. How serious is dengue really? Dengue really can be very serious. Um, dengue can lead to dengue shock syndrome and can lead to dengue hemorrhagic fever and can lead to deaths. So um, because we have a really good dengue control program in place in Singapore, we've managed to sort of manage the dengue outbreaks and help with the sort of hospitalization and the care of dengue patients. But I would say that dengue really is a very serious cause for concern and it, it can't be taken lightly. I mean, like you mentioned, Denise, we have had over 27,000 cases of um, dengue this year alone. And this is five times more than the 5,200 cases we had in last year. And we've had nine deaths so far. But back in the huge dengue outbreak in Singapore in 2020, we had 31 deaths. So, you know, one death is one death too many, to be honest. Um, And it's in other countries, they're experiencing very large numbers of deaths as well. So it's it's really very serious. Uh, A few months ago, a friend of mine, um, she, she fell ill, then we thought she got COVID, right? Then after that she say, oh, it's not COVID, it's just dengue because she went to the hospital. Then all of us is like, oh, okay, well, thank God, it's just dengue. She hospitalized for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> what that's my, that's the first person I know that got dengue. What actually happens when I get dengue? 
So when you get dengue, you can either be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Oh. So some of us actually may have dengue. We may be carrying the dengue virus around, but we actually exhibit no symptoms whatsoever. Mm. But the majority of people probably will develop some kind of symptoms. And there's a spectrum from quite mild symptoms to very severe symptoms. And But some common symptoms that you could experience would be something like a sudden onset of fever for two to seven days. You can also have muscle and joint aches and you can have a skin rash and you can get easy bruising of the skin, you can get persistent vomiting, and in very severe cases, you get um, bleeding from your nose and from your gums, and that's when you have hemorrhagic fever. Are there like different types oh, yes. of dengue? So there are four serotypes of dengue. <laughs> dengue 1, 2, 3 and 4. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what a stupid question. <laughs> yeah, 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 got four types. Yeah. <laughs> so all these four dengue serotypes circulate in Singapore at any one time. They circulate in the world at any one time. But um, of course there are more than these four serotypes. There are over 100 um, okay. strains Whoa. of dengue. But <laughs> the reason why we've actually seen an increase in dengue cases this year, we believe, is because we've seen an increase in the dengue three serotype three so, dengue three yeah so we haven't actually seen this dengue three serotype in a dominant position in singapore for the last 30 years so we've seen a really um, increased number of this uh, of cases due to dengue three and our population has very little immunity to it and that's why oh. many of us right, fell right, sick right, right, and okay. the number of dengue cases increased due to this dengue three serotype sorry why do we not have like a dengue vaccine there are dengue vaccines, oh. um, but um, as yet, we are still um, exploring their effectiveness and whether or not they are something that we would um, use. But um, mosquito control is really the mainstay of dengue control. Which part of the world has the biggest mosquito problem? Amazon forest. But nobody uh, there. I want to say Africa. <laughs> For malaria. For malaria. I, I think it depends on which species of mosquito you're talking about. If you're talking about Anopheles mosquitoes, which are the carriers of malaria, then yes. Anopheles. Okay, I've never heard that word. Di- different species. Yeah, compared we, to the Aedes. Compared yeah. to Aedes, okay. yeah. Southeast Asia, I would say, uh, you know, Aedes is our problem here. Right, right. But right. in Africa, yes. And malaria is a huge burden in the rest of the world. But in Singapore, our primary c- uh, problem with mosquito borne diseases is dengue. Mm-hmm. So that's why we're always telling everybody to do block and saw. John, Dan, do you know what block and saw stand for? I know, just throw it, like, yeah. don't keep stagnant water, yeah. throw it off. Yeah. Wait, what is it? It's block and saw. Block yeah. and saw. Yeah. Does it's it an acronym, stands or something, is it? B-L-O-C-K. Yeah, it's an acronym. Block that, hey, I saw a mosquito over there. Block and saw. Wait, 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 she said I'm right. You're, you're right. The ultimate goal is to get rid of stagnant water. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're right, you're right, you're right. The ultimate goal is to get rid of stagnant water. But NEA came up with acronyms, block and saw, to actually remind the public how to get rid of it. So let me just remind, block stands for break up your hardened soil. You know, you have your um, plant pots and often the soil hardens on the top and then water can stagnate and you get mosquito breeding. L stands for lift your flower pot plates and empty them. O stands for overturn your pails and wipe the rims. C is change your water and your vases regularly. K is keep your roof gutters clear and place my roof gutters. And saw, saw means you protect yourself and protect those living around you. So you spray okay. um, insecticide in dark corners around your home. You apply insect repellent to yourself regularly and you wear long sleeve clothing and long pants. Especially if you think you have dengue to yeah. protect everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so remember block and saw. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm always curious. So like I've, I've been paying attention, right? Outside my house, they have this banner that says your zone is now a green zone, orange uh, zone, uh, red zone. Do you know that there's four colours? I've only, only seen three. What's the fourth colour? It's purple. Yes. What's purple? We rolled out this new purple dengue alert banner to tell people that there are high Aedes mosquito populations in your place. So the other other ones, the early ones, um, the traffic light colours, they were to tell people about dengue cases, you know, the red, right. yellow, and green. Oh, okay. So now we're going a step further in telling people about the Aedes mosquito population to say that your area is a high risk area because you have so many mosquito vectors around. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask what the colours mean. Can we yeah. see the colour now? Go like, hey, we are green yes. today, like when we are driving past. Today. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. like I think it one one time it went from green to like red, like in like yes. three weeks, and we were like, "What's everyone doing yeah. in the neighborhood?" Exactly. <laughs> but I'm also not doing. So it's thing. working. It's working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you paid attention to it. It's really important that we do pay attention to these uh, community alert. I, I have another question, but like, yes. so, um, so these mosquitoes yes. are the carrier of dengue, yes. right? But what if a normal mosquito bites someone that has dengue? Can they carry it or only an Aedes mosquito that bites someone with dengue can carry it? Yes, you're oh. right. Only an Aedes mosquito. That's a clever oh. question. Only an Aedes mosquito because an Aedes mosquito is the vector of dengue. Got you. Why? Yeah. So they each got their own specialization. Right. They right. do. Like the rest die from it? No, they don't no. die from it. They just don't transmit. It. But it, an it, it Aedes, 
replicate inside. Say a Culex right. mosquito were to bite you oh. and you're carrying dengue, it yep. does not replicate the virus and does not transmit it. But oh, one mosquito species can carry more than one type of virus. So Aedes aegypti carries um, chikungunya and Zika as well. So remember Zika. we had that big yeah, yeah, yeah. Zika scare in 2016 when we had the first case of Zika in Singapore. Right. At that point, it was really important that we get rid of Aedes mosquitoes as well because we knew we had the very competent vector in our country. Now we had this new uh, disease coming in, this new virus coming in, and it could um, this vector could pick it up and transmit Zika everywhere. Yikes. Zika wow. was really bad, bad news. So, yeah. When this Zika virus scare kind of came about, right, did Project Wobakia already exist? As you can see from her cup. You know, that, that's, that's really interesting question, Denise, because what <laughs> happened was that we have been studying um, different types of um, new novel mosquito control methods for many years at the National Environment Agency. And we had done six years of um, risk assessment and lab studies into looking at Wolbachia. We were ready to launch on the 18th of October 2016. Oh, very specific. Very Which specific is my anniversary, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the day when we were about to launch the project and do the first releases for the first time. And that's the day when we also announced that there was Zika in Singapore. Oh, yeah, right. so that's why I remember it, yes. Right. So yes, it did um, coincide with the launch of the project. Can you explain to our viewers what is uh, Project Wobakia? Ah, so Project Wobakia Singapore is a novel control tool that NEA has been looking into. Um, so we've done many years of, of research into it. And basically involves releasing male Wobakia carrying Aedes mosquitoes out into the environment to mate with the urban Aedes aegypti females out there. Mm. And they will successfully mate, but all the eggs they produce will not hatch mm. because they're not viable. Because of this incompatible mating between these Wolbachia carrying males and the normal females. And then if you keep releasing these harmless males over time because they don't bite you, um, you will reduce the Aedes aegypti population in the community and then bring down the number of dengue cases. Science! It's yes. freaking easy. So easy yeah. Right? Yeah, when so I first read about it, it's like, wow, yeah. build our it's own army. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, how do mosquitoes mate? How do mosquitoes mate? Eh? Nice. I, think it's but to but. I think it's butt to butt. I think it's butt to butt. It is butt to butt. It's it's. They, they, Wait, they what? Make in butt sex? Well, oh, I don't know. In butt sex. Abdomen to abdomen. Um, so the male mosquito he identifies and pursues a mm. flying female mosquito. Mm. And then the chase. Him. Yeah. <laughs> he has these sort of um, claspers. At the, sort of at the bottom of his abdomen and he will use it to grasp on to the female yeah. oh. and then he will, he will mate with her. And usually mating is over very fast in about 15 seconds. Same. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, female mosquitoes only mate, usually they mate once in their lifetime but then she stores the sperm and she carries it around with her and she can use this sperm to fertilise her eggs throughout her lifetime. Oh, okay. wow. Oh, the, so efficient. Yeah, very efficient. But the purpose of the male mosquito, actually, his sole purpose in life, really, is to find female mosquitoes and mate with them. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so <laughs> this goes back to how Project Wolbachia is so um, effective because we release <laughs> these good male mosquitoes out there and they go out to find all these female mosquitoes that we haven't been able to find and haven't been able to kill and then they help us to reduce the mosquito population. Honey, male save it's our so lives. Yes. So how do you create such male mosquitoes? We mass rear them. We mass breed and mass rear them in the insectary. So any has this um, huge insectary. production facility. Yeah, the insectary, which has become a huge production facility where we use engineering solutions and automation to actually produce um, millions of mosquitoes a week. So millions, millions. Oh, it's so scary. Wait, to but how, how do you reproduce a G, like a type of mosquito that in itself cannot reproduce? If yeah, yeah that, that was my question actually. Oh, oh that's a very Sorry. clever so I question, stole John's question. Both of you. Um, <laughs> right I was thinking me. it also. I just never saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me, me also. Very clever. Um, so if you have <laughs> male mosquitoes that carry well back here and female mosquitoes that carry well back here, their mating is compatible, ah. and they will produce offspring. Okay. That are also oh. So what is Bacchia. what is Wolbachia? Oh, Wolbachia is a naturally occurring bacterium that is already found in nature. So it's found in about sixty percent of insect species all around us. They're found in good insects such as bees, butterflies, dragonflies. Wolbachia is even found in some mosquito species such as Culex. But it was never found in the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Right. So scientists managed to put it inside the Aedes aegypti right. mosquito to use it. Okay. For also, it's not some man-made. Chemical no, that no. we edit their genome. Not at all. No, it's, it's natural. It's totally natural. It's not nothing to do with genetic modification. Right. So to summarize, because the female mosquito <laughs> can only mate once and stores all that sperm, so once she mates with a wobakia, 
mosquito and then she's she's done for life and then it's incompatible so then oh monogamy as excellent summary of it so so once the male wolf okay. mosquito gets wow. to her first If Ooh. the urban male mosquitoes try to get to her, yeah. she's already got her yeah. Wolbachia. Yeah. Wait, yeah, so yeah, yeah. she will dodge the male. Like if got another male want to come and uh, copulate, copulate yeah. with her. <laughs> <in there. laughs> yeah. But at least we reduce the levels yes. of like reproduction. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you gotta overwhelm yes. the females. Yes, they they do when they mate. There is mass swarming anyway. They're gonna suddenly yeah. feel like, eh? How come like so one third uh, suddenly? Like, <laughs> this, this is so fascinating. Yeah, just yeah. It's very fascinating. See, what's the effectiveness of like the project Wobakia? Oh, so project Wobakia has been doing really well. We've seen some very good results. Um, at these two study sites that we've been releasing these male Wobakia mosquitoes at for more than a year, we've seen a reduction in the uh, urban Aedes aegypti mosquito population there of about up to 98%. Oh, that's, uh, that's amazing, yeah. yeah. And a reduction in the number of dengue cases of up to around 88% at these two sites. So that's, you know, fantastic results. It's one of them, Ishun. Um, yeah, uh, a Tampanese and Ishun, yes. <laughs> are, are, are there plans for... Like a wider spread? Or? Yes, absolutely. So we've been doing studies also at other dengue high-risk areas at um, Chua Chu Kang and Bukit Batok towns, okay. and they've also shown very good results so far. And uh, we've recently expanded the expansion of the project so to eight more sites. Um, so this is a really a multi-site field study, and it's, uh, we're taking very much a phased approach. But now we uh, will be covering over about 300,000 households in Singapore, Ooh. and we aim to complete coverage of HDB blocks to increase the coverage from about 19% currently to around 31%. Okay. Yeah. Is Singapore so the only country that does this? Um, no, actually, we we are one of the first that really looked into it and, mm. and started the releases. But there are other countries that are using this what we call population suppression approach. So other countries would be um, Australia, China, Thailand, um, the USA, and the French Polynesia. Right. Uh, these other countries are also looking at releasing male mosquitoes to bring down the mosquito population. So how does this work? Like, is it like a daily basis that sound from NEA that goes to an appointed site? And let go 100,000 mosquitoes or? Yes, so we have our uh, research team um, who actually do have their fixed schedules and they e each week they will go and um, at their fixed times and fixed dates they will go and release these mosquitoes at these study sites. Oh, can we watch them? We can, we no can la, like just watch. In yeah, fact, no. actually, so we requested that Prof bring some mosquitoes for us oh, to yes. see, right? Yes. So, <laughs> it's a very big box. Y'all can put your hand in and oh, the I mosquito know. will yeah. not bite you. This is to prove that they are male. Uh. No, it's to prove that it works. So this this was a very powerful oh visual tool that we used. Don't drop um, it, man. <laughs> Ooh, so many! <laughs> oh my oh. god! I didn't expect so many. It really is to prove that male mosquitoes don't bite. So when we first started this project, before we even released any mosquitoes in the wild, we needed to um, tell everybody, all our stakeholders and all the residents at the study sites, that these male mosquitoes really don't bite you. And it's one thing to tell everybody, but it's another thing to let them see for themselves. So we, we uh -huh. did all these road shows, all this outreach <laughs> and engagement, where we brought along this box of male mosquitoes. Well, not this particular box, but a box of male mosquitoes. <laughs> 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 Who wants to put their hand in first? Dead! No! no. Dead! Dead! Okay. Dead. 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 Okay. No, wait, you I, demonstrate, I, you demonstrate. I, I, I never realised oh, how, demonstrate. Okay. how big mosquitoes are. Eh. This is the Singapore yeah, this one. Is really this is really big. big and thick. Eh. Now it explains why so she can glue their mouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we, see, the uh. ones in the lab are well taken care of. We have very good um, facilities for them. And you know, the female mosquitoes right are very attracted to their manliness. Yes. Very yes. well fed. Yes. Yeah, exactly. so much. They look like they can hunt. So what we she do is... Him. This Wait, is if a you untie sleeve. it, will it fly out? Um, no, so you have to make sure that you untie it in the proper way. So but it doesn't, it doesn't matter if they fly out. It, it, really? it doesn't, it's true, because yeah, we will be releasing these male mosquitoes. We got insecticide. Okay, okay, come. They're going to have to kill these Well, these are expensive mosquitoes, but if you need to kill them, then kill them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, um, uh, but if they run out of my office, you cannot catch them really. Well, in, I mean, we are releasing these mosquitoes into the neighborhood, so they're totally safe. Yeah, I really am itching. This government property. Yeah. So what you do is you put your hand inside okay in this this sleeve <laughs> later they all just go to his hand What? and then you'll see mosquito the male mosquitoes are attracted to your hand and the reason why they're attracted even though they're not blood feeding is because they're looking for a female mate wait they are attracted they are attracted all right so they're, it's like going to the river yes they think that they're looking for a female mate so some people again are more attractive than others obviously i'm not attractive enough slightly, yeah, sorry. But, um, I'm, i'm very attractive to mosquitoes yes, yes. okay okay okay, okay, okay. your turn wait, 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 what was he 
Be See, careful so not to bring nothing has spit in me. What? Okay, then first, yeah. then first. Let's go. All then right. She got five mosquitoes. Okay. Oh, shut up. What's that bottle? Just, just, just water with it. So this is sugar solution. Oh. This is for the uh, the mosquitoes Spooner. to feed on. Just like the flower nectar right, right, plant right. juices right. in the wild so that they can survive. Okay, done. Okay. Oh my gosh, Hi. Danny's so exciting for you. Yeah. <laughs> <He's> so <laughs> <slow>. <laughs> I do. So you actually won't even feel anything because they're so light. Okay. Can you try? Can you try elegant. poking one of them? Like try touching one. You just leave your hand there and see if they come to you. See, they're so elegant, so beautiful. They're actually not <laughs> okay. going to harm. Okay. These are <laughs> male mosquitoes. Are totally harmless. Okay. How do you feel, Dan? I, I, How do you feel? This then? is very strange. I usually hate mosquitoes. If you are they, are they landing you? on you? No, not at all. Like I'm trying to touch one, but I oh oh one landed, and oh. then just said no. You felt it? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I saw very I sensitive. It. And then okay, can we bring out the female box? No. <laughs> <laughs> With AD, then we see who survive. Let John try. John say okay. here. No, no, I feel like there's nothing to try leh. They, just, <laughs> they don't land on you, ah. Then you do. Your only time in life that you'll get to put your hand inside a box of mosquitoes. That's true, actually. Yeah. And there are, how many mosquitoes do you think there are in here? Um, oh, 200. Uh, 50, 100, 75. Okay, number. I think dance. Oh. Okay. There's 200. Do you think there are oh, no, uh, carrying the water from the 100. Plane. There are usually a couple of hundred in here. Okay. okay. Some of the closest. Mm. Yes. yes. <laughs> <Not like that>. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel, John? Harmless, right? I feel a bit. You try touching the one. Oh, oh. 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 there's a mosquito bite. that lands on you. Bite. Bite. That's so interesting. <laughs> they fly away. <laughs> oh, so interesting. Yeah. Now I feel a bit unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this just reinforced all my insecurities. <laughs> you're a mosquito, don't you? Oh, so interesting. But you see how important this is as a tool to explain to the public that male mosquitoes are harmless and they're not going to bite you and in fact they're, they're not good. They're not even interested. Yeah. Should put this all over Singapore. Just we, we are working mozzies. towards expanding yeah. the, the trial to um, help as many dengue high-risk areas as possible. Right, right, right. It's our end game, right, like for this Project Wobakia. Is it to eradicate all of uh, these mosquitoes? So, I mean, that would be wonderful, but eradication of mosquitoes is probably not possible um, right. if they've out-survived us for so long. Our end game is to reduce the mosquito population to such a level that um, it, it's not a big dengue transmission problem anymore in Singapore. Right. To beneath the, like, the dengue transmission. Are we level. close? We are doing well in our release sites, um, but then time will tell um, as we roll out the study and we, we do more of this. But... Um, you know, the mosquitoes are really very clever. So it's, yeah. um, you know, they're always one step ahead of us. Yeah, the probability is insane because <laughs> if, if insane. they bite three people in their lifetime to breed, they must first of all find one person with dengue. Mm. And then in their three bites, one of them must have dengue for them to spread Yes, dengue, the first right? bite. The probability have. is so low and yet yeah. But there are millions of, of mosquitoes. Of yeah. There are millions of mosquitoes. In fact, the mosquito bites more <laughs> than three people in her lifetime. Because this Aedes aegypti mosquito, she's a very stealthy biter. So she'll probably, if there was one mosquito in here, the chances are she'll bite at least three or four of us. Ah. So... But she only needs to feed one time, right? She does, but... It's what part one meal, is it? That multiple yeah, bites? multiple bites to make up that one meal. Oh, oh. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, okay. I see, I see, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see. So it's my like elbow is itchy. Yeah. 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 So, so how, how, how many bites uh, <laughs> make up one meal? <laughs> <laughs> how many bites make up a meal? Mm. Depends oh. on how much you suck from each guy. Uh. Yes, exactly. So if she manages to suck from one person and that person doesn't disturb her, then she's fine, she'll fly off. But right. if that person disturbs her, she'll fly on to the next person. And right. So if we all just endure mosquitoes when they come, we can also bring down so just the, just the keep flexing. rate of transfer. Don't oh, no, just let them finish. Yes. Uh, so yes. For the greater good. For the greater good. Take one for the team. Full meal from one bite. It's possible. It's possible. Oh, okay. But you see, if you let her finish feeding on you, there's a higher chance that she's going to transmit dengue to you in her course of blood feeding. Oh. Right. If she takes a small bite compared to a big bite, the the risk of dengue is higher with your big bite. Right. Right. Oh. And they have to. Is it only human blood? For um, Aedes aegypti yeah. mosquitoes, they prefer humans. But for other species like Cavopictus, they do feed on um, animals as well. Right, right, so right, it right. depends. E aegypti has evolved over time to really preferentially feed on humans and to live in our homes with us. So like, based on your projections, like, what is the end goal for like this project? So um, really, we are 
using Wolbachia technology, Wolbachia Aedes technology as a complementary control measure for our existing dengue control measures. It's not a silver bullet. It's not a turnkey solution. It's not an off-the-shelf solution. We have to work very closely with our partners to really um, improve automation, improve engineering solutions, which we have been doing for the last few years. But it is a complementary control measure, and we still need everyone to do their part. And the most important thing is everyone getting rid of mosquito breeding, um, removing your stagnant water in your homes, doing your block and doing your saw. And that's really what's going to bring down the number of dengue cases. This is just something new that will complement and um, helpfully help to find those female mosquitoes that we haven't been able to find. And it's doing fantastically so far, but we cannot let our guard down. Yeah, Wait, does, yeah, the yeah. Sticker does the blue sticker work? So that is the mosquito white patch. Uh. So mosquito patches can have some limited effectiveness, but usually it's quite localized, yeah. and it depends on what's on the patch. If it's a oh. chemical, mm. um, or if it's a, um, a natural substance such as citronella. What about the coil? Yes. Uh. Oh, so the coil I'll works by um, by smoke. Yeah. Um, when you burn the coil, it the smoke repels mosquitoes, oh. but it doesn't kill mosquitoes, and oh. it's just a very localized right. effect. So by the time it's over, then it's. Yes feeding season yeah. again. Okay. But we always say that the most effective um, mosquito repellent to use is something that contains um, DEET or picaridin. So those are the oh, things. If, if it's a yeah. DEET or what? It was the picaridin. 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 Yeah. What is this? Picaridin. It's, it's, a, it's a chemical picaridin. substance. Oh, oh. And those are known to be very effective against mosquitoes. Okay, I don't really use insect repellent, but do you apply it to your skin or your the clothing? You can, you can apply to both, really. Um, it depends. If you're wearing a T-shirt like you are, then you would apply to both because if you are exposed to arms, it would be more attractive to the host-seeking right, 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 female right. mosquito. Okay, right. yeah. Yeah. Does certain colours attract mosquitoes more than others? Oh, yes, absolutely. <gasps> so, what? This Black. was a PSLE question, yes. right? I didn't do pizza. Uh, <laughs> sorry. From Malaysia. Um, okay. Dark colours. Dark oh. colours, especially. Wow, yeah. is, no okay. wonder they don't like you today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, good chat, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, once again, thank you to today's partners, NEA. And I hope that you've gotten more insight into Singapore's dengue situation as well as how to protect yourself and your families. Download the My ENV app to get real time dengue updates. And there's also links in the description down below for you to get more information. Thank you for Professor. Uh, thank you. Thank for. you for Professor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you too, Professor Christina, Ooh. for coming down today and Yay. sharing us so very interesting. interesting facts. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're so fun. You're so fun. See you in the next episode. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> you want to study mosquitoes? I think so. Oh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's amazing, right?